I'm going to start moving him around me. So this is the, the precursor to lunging. It's very important that horses do this. It's also very important we don't do too much of it. I'm going to ask him to move his shoulders first. So I'm going to send him out to the left. It's important with your hands we think about our hands. So I have a lead hand and a trail hand and I want my hands when I work with my horse on the ground to be in a manner like I'm riding with my reins. So when I send him out with my left hand, my lead hand, because that's going to be his direction, my pinky goes first and my trail hand is back here with the tail of my rope. Okay. I want to make sure when I send him out that I don't have too much rope because if he comes into my space or I need to correct him, it's like having your reins too long. I'm at a disadvantage if I'm not in the correct rein length or halter shank length. So I'm going to ask him, put a little pressure on this left shoulder. I want his left front foot to move over his right front foot. If he walks forward, that's perfect. Again, left front foot over right front. And I want him to kind of look at me with this left hand. Good. Okay, from here, I'm going to ask him, I traded my hand. So now my right hand, I'm going to talk more about it, but my right hand now is my lead hand and my left hand is my trail hand. So I'm going to show him with this right hand that I want him to come through right over left. That was really good. It's really important that you reward them when they give you that effort to start because they need to know that is the answer to your puzzle. Make it very clear to them that they have done it correctly. And that's what they want. They want to know they've done it correctly. They're like mathematicians. They like formulas. They like puzzles and they want to succeed. They really want to know that they're getting the answer for you. We're going to ask the shoulder to move across again, right front foot over left. So he's better on this side and horses are right-handed and left-handed, just like humans. It's important we work on the side that they're sticky on more than the good side. So I almost want to focus on making the sticky side better than their good side. So now I'm going to start asking him to move his hindquarters away from me. I want his front feet to pivot and his hindquarters to move. So I'm going to come on this right side, my rein, my shank is still the same. I have my left lead hand and my right trail hand. So I'm going to walk in at the back of his rib cage. That's where I want to put my energy at. And I want him to have left hind over right hind. That's the footwork I'm looking for. I also now want the left front to move over the right front. So he's kind of curling his body around me and moving away from me. So I'll ask him, I'll come in at this rib cage. Left hind over right hind, left hind over right hind. And that's a really good effort. So I am going to let him just think about that one. I'll move to the other side. We'll do the other rib cage. This is all stuff when I get on his back, I'm going to ask him to do the exact same activities on his back as I am on the ground. So it really helps them if they have a knowledge of when you put that pressure on, that pressure with my leg, when I want his hindquarters to move, is going to go on the same spot that I'm putting pressure on with my energy and my body in this exercise right here. So he's already familiar with it. When I get on his back, I'm going to put pressure there. It's going to be my leg, but he already knows when pressure's there, he's supposed to move left hind over right hind. Okay, we'll ask him to do that again. Left hind over right hind. I've got his nose with my left hand. You watch his front feet. We're getting left front over right front. So he's moving that shoulder away. I can come back with my energy because that was really good. Twist out of my shank. I'm going to ask him to move his shoulder right front over left front. Okay. Now I'm going to come in at the three quarter mark of this rib cage where my leg is going to hit. And I want right hind over left hind right front over left front. I want a little bit more energy. So put a little bit more pressure on this rib cage. 
A little bit more pressure and release. Now that he has an understanding of giving to the pressure on the halter shank laterally, we've moved his shoulders, we've moved his hindquarters. Now we're going to start asking him to move forward and put the pieces together. With my energy and my body, I want to be as still as I can. I can move with him, but I don't want to compensate for him not doing the movements by me moving around him. That's a common mistake I see with lunging is that the person does more work than the horse does. So I want to make sure I'm sending his body around me and not me around him. So my belly button, I want to always have directed just behind the heart girth because that's the pressure I'm going to put on him when I ride him to start moving him forward. So it's important he understands how to follow the pressure with the knot underneath his halter because that's how my lead hand, pinky first, sends him out. He's going to feel that pressure and he should figure out that that pressure is directing him to go forward. Now I'm also going to use this trail hand. Okay, belly button, heart girth, trail hand, a little bit of pressure behind. I want to drive him forward. Okay, I'm going to ask for a little bit more energy, so put a little bit pressure on behind. When I ask for more energy to the feet, I use a click. Good boy. And this click is always rhythmic, like a metronome. So I set the rhythm with my click that I want his feet to move to. Because I'm going to use that tool when I get on his back as well. Okay, I'm going to ask him to trot, so I need to put a little bit more pressure on from my driving. When I ask for a forward increase, I kiss. Okay, when he gives me that, I release that pressure by backing away just a little bit. Now I want to make sure his right eye is focused on me. If he slows his tempo down, put pressure on behind. He's never allowed to pull on this halter shank. It's just like when I'm riding him. I don't want him to pull on my reins, so he needs to be soft at all times. Okay, he can walk, that's good. Keep tempo in the walk. Now I'm going to ask him to move his hindquarters away from me. I'm going to explain what my hands do because I need to switch my trail hand and my lead hand. So I drop my trail hand. I come pinky first. I slide up the rope. The rope comes across shoulder hit, shoulder height, and I walk towards his hindquarters. And that's exactly what I wanted him to do was face up and take his hindquarters away from me. So I'll let him, let him soak on that and sit and think about what just happened. I'll ask him to back up. Okay, now I'm going to stick to the same side. This time I'll ask him to switch direction, so lead hand. Now I find this is very difficult for people to stand right in front of their horse and ask them to move away. What most people do is this. And then ask their horse to go. So they have adjusted their position, not asking the horse to move their body. So from here, I want a lead hand and show him. I'm going to put pressure on this right shoulder. So I wanted that right shoulder to step over. Now I need to drive the hind forward. Okay, so at walk, we're going to switch direction. So what I just explained with my hands is very applicable right here. What I just explained with my hands, I'm going to repeat. So I'm going to drop my trail hand, pinky first, up my rein, step at the hind quarters. Now I've switched my trail hand. So from here, I want a new direction with my lead hand, and I'm going to ask his right shoulder to step over and then drive him forward. And the trot's okay because that gave me energy and that's what I wanted. Okay, I'll ask him to trot this way. I always like to keep life in the feet when I do these exercises. Kiss for forward. 
Another common thing I see with lunging is people make way too much noise. Okay. I ask with my voice and then I follow up with the energy if I don't get my response within two or three strides. Okay, I didn't ask him to stop, put some more pressure on, back away. Okay, I want a little bit more energy. Okay, if he goes to look away, I'm still putting pressure on with that left hand, keeping that left eye on me. Okay, this one we're gonna do at trot. So trail hand, up the rope, step at the hind quarters. So I put a little bit more pressure on that shoulder to ask him to put a little bit more effort into his turn. We're gonna ask him to do that again. Okay, more energy in the trot. Okay, lead hand, step at the hind quarters, right shoulder, and then drive him forward. And I kind of backed my pressure off there because he gave me such nice footwork. I didn't want him to feel rushed and trapped getting out of that maneuver. Okay, one more, a little bit more energy. Another thing with my trail hand, it's not always doing something. If he is doing what I want him to do, I just relax. That tells him everything's cool. I want more energy in the trot. Okay, he's a little, putting a little bit of pressure on my lead rope on my left hand. More energy in the trot. Okay, trail hand, switching, step at the hind quarters, shoulder, drive him forward. Good job. We're gonna do one right away, and then we'll let him have a break. More energy. Switch. Now you'll notice when I do this, I'm walking at him. Because I have to use my energy to get life into those feet. Hind quarters, shoulders. I'm getting closer to him. That one was a little bit draggier, so he has to do one more. I want those feet to be nice and crisp and sharp. Hind quarters, shoulder, nice. Okay, now it's hard to know when to quit, when you've got what you wanted, but I feel he can do this side better for me. Good. Okay, now I'm gonna ask him to stop. Step out the hindquarters. If he drags on that shank, I put more pressure on that shank. Mm -hmm. 